Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to California Care CICST. Today we are going to talk about building occlusal blocks to disclude the occlusion in front. This procedure might be needed if you are discluding either for full bite restoration, opening up the bite and doing crowns on posteriors as well as anteriors to disclude the bite and make new occlusion with a new occlusion table. It might also be temporarily needed if you're doing orthopedics or orthodontics for either intrusion or extrusion or teeth or whatever purpose you might have. That's a separate subject and one day we shall talk about it. But today we'll talk about the procedure on how to disclude the bite bilaterally to keep it balanced so the patient does not have any painful sequela to this procedure. The example we are using is actually a cast and this is the lower cast and that's the upper cast and we got them both articulated and the idea is to show you here instead of in the mouth so you get a little better idea. I'm going to normally use the lower teeth to build up the occlusion and I normally start with the lower right side. What I would do is in the mouth I would etch the tooth very nicely, clean it, dry it on the occlusion surface, only on the occlusion table and I would apply a couple of sparse of adhesive if you're doing this for very long term like in orthodontics or orthopedics. If you're doing it temporarily, within a week or so, you're going to change the whole occlusion. I would not apply the adhesive, but except maybe one tiny spot somewhere to keep the composite there. So once we have etched and we have applied the composite adhesive in a spot or so, I would express my flowable or packable composite onto the occlusion. And I would get it to whatever uh, determination I want, which will be about a millimeter or so. And I would keep it nicely level. So I'm filling up only the occlusal space between the two cusps on the facial lingual, on the mesial, as well as on the distal. So once that aspect is done and you have stopped that, you cure it. Recording. So what I would do here is I would apply into the distal aspect between the distal lingual and distal facial cusp first, and I would cure it. I would make sure I do not follow over the embrasure. On the mesial also, I would take it to the embrasure without connecting to two teeth together. But I would not fill up the whole mesial yet because I'm going to build it in occlusion in accordance with the rest of the teeth. After I have built up the distal part of the lower second molar, I would take some Vaseline inside the mouth also, dry the upper teeth and apply the Vaseline onto the occlusion surface, paying special attention to the embrasures and the functional cusps because I do not want the next composite that is going to be applied to the lower teeth to stick with the upper teeth. Now at this time, I would go ahead and check this out to make sure I have dis good disclusion. So I have disclusion in the anterior segment now very nicely. So what I'll come back now is I would do a block of all of these teeth, first premolar, second premolar, first molar, and the mesial of the second molar. I would etch them, dry them, apply spot adhesive, and now I would apply composite to all of these. Here, as we did only the mesial of the second molar, I would take the patient into occlusion and I would cure it. Cure, please. Okay. As you have cured it and we disclude, you will come to realize that the occlusion is built very nicely. The upper functional cusp now has an opposing occlusion on the lower tooth and we're able to see that very nicely right here so this is the vaseline that came from the upper tooth you see and it's very nice and simple you remove that vaseline and then you can finally cure it you can do these on all the teeth simultaneously or you can do one tooth at a time somebody raised a question that if you have done one tooth like a second molar why would you need to disclude rest of them multiple reasons you want to make sure that you have a balanced bite bilaterally especially in ortho and and if you do not have an ortho it becomes even more important because the teeth will start erupting super erupting and the occlusion will be totally off so you don't want that to happen third of all you have seen in the past in your own practices if you leave the occlusion high on one tooth then it becomes very painful so in this case if all the occlusions are high on all the teeth then they're in, in groove function and the teeth would not hurt. So here we are doing an example in which we are building up each and every tooth. I hope you realize here I'm working with plaster and the things are not as sticky. 
as there would be natural cases. As we progress anteriorly, do realize you're going to need more composite in the anterior teeth compared to posterior teeth because we have a theory of projection. As you move away from hinge, the projected area increases. So about half a millimeter on the posterior teeth would result in adding two to three millimeter on anterior teeth. So once you have put the composite on all of these teeth and you have lubricated the opposing, you have the patient closed down and then through that open area, you cure each. Let the patient bite down tight, and now you have the new bite on the right side. Keeping this right side as your guide, you can do the whole segment on the left side the same way, and now both right and left side are bilaterally balanced, and they have occlusal contacts, functional occlusal contact with the functional opposing teeth, which are the palatal cusps of the opposing, which is maxilla and uh, you are able to then adjust and smooth any irregularities and you have totally bilateral balance bite. Now if you're doing reconstruction, what I would do at this time, if you have built up, let's say the right side, I would go ahead and prep the left side molars and premolars. Hypothetically, two molars and two premolars, that's four upper teeth and four lower teeth. Take the impression, send it to the lab, have prefab temporaries made, you put those inside the mouth at the preparation and I'll step back, explain the whole procedure. At this time, you take the two impressions, upper and lower arch. You take the bite, you send it to the lab. You do not prep the left side. The lab will go ahead and make you uh, prefab temporaries. You bring them in the next morning and the right side is already stable. On the left side, I would go ahead and prep the upper and the lower teeth when they're open right now. And as soon as the preparation is done, I will take the impression with that open bite on the left side and is fully occluded on the right side. And I will take the prefab temporaries that the lab made for you in the open bite that the impression you took a day before. I will cement those temporaries. Now the patient has fully balanced temporaries as bite on the left side. I would get the crowns manufactured, try them out, make sure everything is right, and then cement the left side. Now the left side is fully balanced with the open bite. Now I would come back and prepare the right side after making new temporaries for the right side in the lab. I would go ahead and prep, take the impressions, cement the new temporaries, and once the patient is stable, bring the crowns back in a few days, cement the crowns. Now posterior bite on both sides, including the premolars and the molars have new crowns, and the anterior bite is open now. Now you can go ahead and do simultaneously upper and lower canine to canine preps and have this prefabricated temporaries, not prefabs, but prefabricated in the lab. Those are custom temporaries. Cement those, get your crowns processed, bring the patient back in, take the temporaries off, put the crowns, and now you have done full mouth reconstruction with bilaterally balanced and canine guided occlusion. Thank you.